Hey Internet, sorry here. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're back with another episode of Tales from the Bank. This time, highlighting the difference between going head-to-head -head against a bank versus a credit union when trying to get them to pay out your promotional offer and what's owed to you. So of course, we will break down my story, and it is a decent one. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. Now, as always, you know, we've talked about the difference between banks and credit unions, and we have videos on that. But one thing we haven't really talked about in depth is like, how do you interact with each one? Because on the surface, you would think they're both financial institutions. Your interaction would be the same, right? Whether you're opening something, whether you're closing something, whether you're trying to get them to pay something they owe you. And yes, to an extent, but there's actually a little bit different that's what we'll highlight today. So, of course, we open many bank accounts here, primarily on the second channel, Run on the Bank, and the website, ProfitableContent.com. And so I'm doing a bank promotion with a credit union, uh, people-driven credit union. They're, they were nice. They solved this problem very well. So this is not a hate video by any means. This is actually a shout-out to them. As you'll see, I, it happens to the best of them. So anyhow, I was doing this promotional offer, and I, I started it back in like March or April, and you know, through the terms, it's supposed to give you like 120 days before they pay. I'll put it up on a second. We'll talk about the offer, and I like to go through my banking spreadsheet every so often and see like, mm, where am I past due at? Who should have paid me and who hasn't? And if it's been a while, then I go check the terms, see, oh, you should have paid and then I reach out to the bank, right? That's kind of where our story picks up. So if you take a look at this offer to start, um, again, you can see we've got $200 up for grabs. Again, it's credit union deal. Um, so what did you have to do? Essentially, if you scroll all the way down, what they wanted you to do was make a direct deposit and then, and then you'd be good to go. But sometimes what you run into is credit unions don't always write terms and conditions uh, as uptight as, as a bank would do. So for example, if you look at these terms and conditions, um, to qualify for the $200 cash bonus, you must be a member of a qualifying checking account with people driven and meet the deposit conditions below. So you must set up reoccurring direct deposit into your new PDCU checking account within 30 days of account opening. They did put that part in red, which is a nice touch. Qualifying direct deposit, they define what that is. And they say the $200 cash bonus will be credited to your account within 100 days of meeting the requir requir um, requirements. That's the word. Of course, don't close your account, things like that. So it's fairly standard. And so when you look at this, the word reoccurring actually in the bank bonus world means a few different things. So by its basic definition, recurring means it happens one more more than once, right? It's happened at least twice. Um, but a lot of times, what banks really mean is like they uh, like a payroll check, your, your payroll check, you know, every two weeks, every month, whatever it is, that's recurring. Like the type of transaction is recurring, and then they would actually specify the amount you need to make two direct deposits, three, what have you. They would also just uh, specify an amount: five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, whatever it is, right? So these conditions are very loose. So what I did was I did two direct deposits, an actual paycheck each, and I they don't specify the amount. So I just sent, if you don't specify the amount, then I send $500. Could be less, could be more because they don't say, but I sent $500. And so I, I did complete the terms. And so anyhow, haven't been paid. So I reach out, they have chat support. Um, I, calling's easier, but I want to, I PDF the terms as you saw. So I like to send them attachments. So reach out to them, send them the PDF, like, hey, you know, here I'm trying to, you know, get this to pay. Here are the dates completed. Hasn't paid out yet. Can you confirm I completed it? And you know, when can I expect payment? They couldn't see the PDF. I sent it again. No replies. Like, hey, did you get it? If not, send me an email and I'll send it to you because it's still easier than reading it. They're going to need to see it before they just believe you. It's easier than trying to tell them to go look it up in their archive. So anyhow, they send me the link, secured link. Perfect. I send them the attachment and uh, maybe like a few hours later, actually like a phone call, believe it or not. I'm one of those people who I do answer the phone and I'm talking to there's a credit union representative. And that right there is like the first thing because banks do not make outbound calls. Like if they're trying to sell you something, sure. But bank customer service will not call you. They always tell you they'll call you that someone will call you. They never will. Uh, at the branch level, maybe, but not like back office. They won't do it. So the fact that they call already like plus 10 in their case. Now, they called and the lady was very nice. She was like, well, yeah, but did you read it? I was like, well, yeah, I did read it. Did you read it? Let's put it back on screen while we talk about this, just the highlighted part now. You know, her point was, the, the credit union's point was that 
well, yeah, you were supposed to keep the direct deposit going for 120 days recurring. And since you didn't do that, you didn't meet the requirements. I said, ah, I see what you mean. I see why you could say that, but that's not what it says. And the, this is where we get into the part of like the difference. I think because someone decided, because someone's talking to you and working with you, you want to, you don't need to go, you need to hold your ground and make your point, but you don't need to be overly aggressive about it. I would not take this approach if it was a bank, but we wouldn't have ended up here if this was a bank because a bank would have never called. So I pull it up because I knew it was coming. So I've got it the same as I do now. I say, well, you know, by definition, this says recurring. So I did two direct deposits, which is recurring. Uh, and a lot of times because direct deposit, which is between you and me, not what I'm saying there, but because direct deposit bonuses have been so scarce for me, I threw two at it just to be safe because that word again, recurring can be a little bit nebulous. So I did two to be covered. So I'm saying it doesn't specify the amount and it says recurring. It does not say they have to stay, keep, keep going for the 120 days. It just says complete it and you'll be paid within 120 days. And so it's like, yeah, okay, let me, go talk to me. Let me, let me talk to my boss and let you know. And that right there is actually a small win because we get mad a lot. But if you think about yourself at your own job, and I can relate to this because I was in the appraisal department years and years and years ago, uh, you know, branch managers and loan officers would love to waive the appraisal fee until the end. They'd say pay at closing. You're supposed to pay the appraisal fee up front. That way, if you don't like the appraisal or the deal falls through, the bank doesn't get short. For whatever reason, they thought it would move faster. So they delay it. And sometimes, you know, the closing department would come back and they would ask us. And even if the file was noted and everything, even if it was so clearly obvious that, yes, the fee should be on there, they would still not say. They're going to make you say, make someone else say, right? Um, and that's really what they're trying to do. So let me go ask my boss. He's like, well, okay, fine. I've heard your case. I'm not going to say I agree with you, but eh, you've made enough argument politely enough that I will go ask the person who can do something about it because no customer service rep should ever put themselves out there like that on the hook for $200. So that's, that's my point is that's a win. And then again, second point, they called me back maybe three, four hours later. It was like, hey, the money's in the account. Thanks for being a valued member, right? Which is what they have to say. But uh, all I'd say, that was a very good interaction. Um, they called me twice. They followed up the whole deal. So, you know, it, it happens, right? I'm not overly mad about this. You know, it happens. And what really happened was whoever wrote these terms wrote it from the standpoint of why would someone ever want to join a credit union in like, do two direct deposits and then leave, right? So I can see how a credit union, a local credit union ends up writing something like this, you know, but they don't really think about the whole world that we that we do, what we traffic in, right? So the difference is here, again, we've kind of highlighted them as we go, but, you know, I think when you're talking, if you get someone on the phone and they're at least willing to listen, I don't think you have to go overly hard. I don't think you have to, I told them, in fact, I was like, look, if you can't do it, so be it. Like, I'm not going to file a complaint or whatever. And I meant it. I'm not going to file a complaint over this, like whatever. But with the bank, my approach is different. We've done videos on, you know, fighting with banks for promotions. And, you know, I will call to say I tried to call, but I won't waste my time with the bank going back and forth. I will instantly open a CFPB complaint after the first, if the first pass of communication fails, I'm opening a complaint because I'm not wasting my time dealing with the, the bureaucracy, the defensive bureaucracy that the bank has. Furthermore, it's too hard to, even if the bank is talking to you, it's actually still hard to retain communication, remain in communication with them. Citizens, for example, I had an issue with like last year, and after finally getting there, sometimes you get disconnected and you've got a call back in the beginning. So I finally tried chat and that worked after getting disconnected from that a few times. And they open a ticket and then someone did respond via email to the ticket. And they even had a signature line, but it says their name, first name, then if you want to follow up, call back in. So you can't even get to the person working on your issue that's just going to be a nebulous thing. Now I have to explain to the next person that I'm reading the email. They have to get familiar with it on and on and on, right? And that's kind of the difference between banks. Banks are set up, you know, to be fortresses almost or credit union because they are nicer people. They are smaller and local. You know, a lot of times you can talk to someone. Now there's a downside as well, which is not really what the video is about. But, you know, I've called, I remember going 
at it with GTE trying to get money. And I called them. They were nice about it. But you call them, and they're like, well, the, the promotions department is in a meeting. So call back. Like, what, what do you mean the whole department's in a meeting? Yeah, but it's not that big of a place, right? It's like four dudes, maybe three dudes. So anyhow, the whole moral of the story, I believe, is to remember who you're about to go head to head with and tailor your approach and your communication accordingly. Again, it's for banks, prepare for a battle. It doesn't have to be a battle, not that banks will never help you, but banks, it's going to historically, it's much harder to get help from a bank in my standpoint, as far as having someone own the issue, someone reach out to talk to you, like that's just, that's not gonna happen. They fixed these, banks have fixed issues for me, don't get me wrong, but it's not gonna happen where the person at the bank picks up the phone and initiates the phone call. Like Ally Blast was story. Like Ally, as much as I love Ally, like I got, I was trying to get, I was a, I had an issue linking accounts to my Ally Bank. So after finally calling in, they opened a ticket for me. And eventually Ally sent me an email that said, hey, we tried to contact you, but you didn't answer, which is untrue because I, as we've proven, I will answer the phone if you call. And so when I phoned them in, I was like, well, hey, what, you know, what number did you try to call? Can you verify it? I'm like, yeah, this, this is your number. But they didn't actually try to call. They were just sending notifications to trigger you to call in. Now, on and on and on, sure, in their defense, you can say people don't answer the phone, this, that, and the other. It, it's still the point that, like, this wouldn't have happened at a bank. The credit union was actually a much easier process to get this done. Again, doesn't even necessarily mean credit unions would cave and concede the offer to you by any means, but you know, in this case, it did work out. So, uh, moral of the story: I think when you're going through these uh, disputes, uh, you know, tailor your approach accordingly. And sometimes you are making progress, even though it doesn't feel like you're making progress. Again, as we said, getting someone to talk to their boss, you know, is making progress because they're not going to take that responsibility on. You don't know. We can only do so much, right? Are they actually doing it behind the scenes? Who's to say? But again, that's that is progress. And so this one worked out. So there you go. Another tale from the bank completed. Of course, if you want to get in on the bank account bonus hunting action, run on the bank, profitablecontent.com. And of course, if you become a channel member, why don't you? We have a whole group of people over there on the Discord who would love to have you. We're about 80 members strong, and we talk about things just like this. And of course, bonus hunt together. That join button will tell you more about it. $5 a month, cancel any time. Just join on whichever channel you like the most. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. So of course, you liked it. Drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channels. We are posting content just like this every single week. Of course, right back every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance. And of course, every single day over on ProfitableContent.com. Anyways, guys, that'll do it for this one. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you very soon in the next one.